Hello, welcome back to my studio. As part of this digital residency, I thought I'd share some of the pots that I have in my collection with you guys that inspire me to make the work that I do. The first is this cup, or you know me, by a fantastic potter who lives in Ryder. His name's Phil Rogers and he makes a lot of Oriental and Far Eastern inspired pots. This particular piece is wood fired, which means it's been fired in a kiln filled by wood, which you constantly supply the kiln with fill with wood over a period of two, three days four days sometimes, depending on what temperatures you want to reach. The way he's made, he's made this on the wheel, and while he was still wet, he's shaved off or turned a lot of this base to create this particular shape. And then while the clay was leather hard, he's painted a coat of white liquid clay called slip over the top of this, over the top of the surface, which you can see some of the brush marks and then he's picked up some of those brush marks with a little tool and just made some nice little grass motif marks on there right the way around absolutely beautiful this would have been bisque fired which means it would go into a kiln and fired up to a thousand degrees so all the organic material would have been burnt off it and left with those, uh, a porous ceramic shell it would have been dipped in some glaze, some glaze would have been poured into a side and then dipped in some glaze and this particular glaze is called an ash glaze which means that one of the main components of the glaze is wood ash which has been sieved and washed to take out a lot of the impurities. A specific trait of ash glazes are these beautiful runs really full of colour, full of life, energy, really fluid glazes and it just creates so much character in a pot. I love it. Along those same lines is another pot by Phil Rogers. Same glaze, same making technique but this particular bowl or pot is called a Chawan for drinking matcha tea for the tea ceremony you'll notice one of the defining characteristics of a chawan or tea bowl is it's how it feels in your hands to hold also it has this little well inside right there to catch the matcha powder so you don't drink it down and it's really important to consider when you're making these how it feels on your lips and Phil has made a little really um, how would you explain it sort of a little, little tapered lip on this so it fits really lovely against your lips um, the glaze is again an, uh, an ash glaze or pine ash and then what Phil has done is got a, uh, a brush of another glaze called a nuka glaze which is traditionally white and then you just run the edge of the brush over the top over these corners there just to create this pool run of white glaze right way around the, the pot and it pools then on the high points so you can see this band that he's put into the pot while he was still spinning on the wheel that catches the glaze lovely and just breaks the surface up perfectly Another thing to notice that it's not straight. Now, one of the really important things for Phil while he's making his pot is to show that the clay was once plastic, which means it was once a soft material, to show that it was made by hand, so it's not super straight edges, super harsh angles. So it looks organic, natural maybe, and it works perfectly with the glaze. 
another tee ball by Phil. It's a slightly different in finish. So it has this banding around the, the center of the pot again for the same reason, to break up the surface to create a nice texture when you hold it there. You can hold it there with your f and it fits lovely in between your two fingers. Um, so this surface is unglazed, but whilst it was in the kiln, in the wood fired kiln, you can see that the flame would have come around like this and hit that's this side of the pot and then the smoke has wrapped around this side to create this lovely tonal difference. So it's all beautifully tan there, a beautiful red colour and it comes around here and it's a bit more smoky and mottled. So there's the well again to catch the matcha powder. So Phil would have used slip to line the inside of the pot while it was still wet and then after bisque frying he glazed it with an elm glaze an elm ash glaze so it's the same kind of glaze but different wood ash and it creates a totally different finish from this dark iron rich pine glaze to this lighter less heavy elm glaze so Carrying on the Far Eastern theme, I have these two little tea bowls. I think they're tea bowls. I think they're called Gaiwan in Japanese. And they're quite heavy. There's a lot of clay there in the base. So I think they would have been fired in a similar sort of kiln as what Phil uses. Definitely in a reduction atmosphere, which means the oxygen within the kiln has been reduced. So the metals within the clay and within the glaze are drawn out of the the glaze and you see more of a metallic finish in the in the pots when they've been reduced one of the magical things about this these little teacups is this dollop of glaze that the potter you can imagine him just similar to what Phil did with the nuka glaze he just brushed the edge of the brush up against the pot of that and it's just created this big dollop of white glaze which he's painted a plum blossom hold that right up against it so that's a plum blossom and imagine now that would that would when that's heated that turns fluid and runs a lot but he's still managed to capture uh, so much detail in both of these little pots it's incredible true craftsmanship Fantastic material knowledge. So again with the Far Eastern Japanese theme. This is another you know me, but it's by a Japanese potter called Ken Matsuzaki. Um, this particular you know me, the finish on it is called Yohen Shino. So Shino is this white slip clay glaze here which he's applied so he's made the cup he's made the cup he's shaved it he's altered the shape slightly and he's held it in his right hand and he's scooped up a handful of the chino glaze and just brushed it on like this without too much thought consider consideration to capture the energy in the pot it's really important he would have done this a million times so i mean he would have given it a lot of thought, but obviously to create this pattern, but it doesn't overthink it, it's not overworked, it's not pretentious or prissy or anything, it's just done and it's absolutely full of life and a real treasure of mine. To create this golden luster effect, he fires his work in a wood fuel kiln again but this time for eight days straight. So which, for eight days, they fill the kiln with bits of timber. Ash from the wood is deposited on the pots. And then on the seventh or eighth day, they push the temperature up past the point where the glaze, uh, where the ash can stays in the form that it is and melts into a glaze and then it creates this beautiful effect 
and, and again, depending on where in the kiln this is placed, you get different effects. So, the next pot is more traditionally British in decoration and application, and it's by a chap called Clive Bowen. It's really simple, it's just a little terracotta earthenware pot. So, terracotta earthenware means it's low fired and it's got a lead bisilicate glaze. It's not poisonous, but the glaze is lead based. And again, the potter made this on the wheel. He's attached the handle. So he's attached the handle and pulled it like this. And then just made this little fishtail decoration design on the bottom. Probably dipped it in some slip. And then you can see how you can see this little comb work along the bottom. It's just really. unpretentiously just made a little mark and then run his finger over the top just make some little marks got some slip some different colored slip to make a mark there like the pot to doing this would have done probably like maybe a hundred or whatever in the day so you can't wait you can't spend ages thinking about every little mark so you just pick the pot up and you just do these marks and then with the attempt of with the idea of capturing some life within them. So this is a real little treasure of mine. I love using it. And uh, this particular one is one that I've made bearing with the ideas of all these other pots that I've just shown you. It's made with black clay which is quite heavy, dense clay. And it's thrown on the wheel. I've made it with this really strong foot. Similar to how Phil makes his, I like to show the plasticity of the clay and the movement of the wheel as much as I can within my work. Um, this foot that I've shaped into the bowl, once this leather hard, allows you to hold it like this dip into some into glaze or into slip so you can see that I dip that into a bucket of slip shake the excess off and literally just gone like this all the way around or maybe this way I might have done it and then wipe my finger around the edge like that to create this pattern just to break up the surface so it's not just like a flat white surface but then you can see some of the clay underneath and this black clay is lovely in texture. It's got a lot of grog inside, which means it's got a lot of texture. So that's how these other pots have gone in, gone on to inform my own work. There we go. Deal